So, I went on a cruise a couple weeks ago, and uh, it was really fun. Here's a montage. We're going on a cruise. I'm excited. It's 6.30 in the morning, and we got about five hours of sleep, and we paid for a hotel for that fault. My mom paid for a hotel for the five hours. We have to leave for the airport in six minutes. Shit. We definitely went the other way, but... No, we didn't. We've got our shuttle at 6.40. Okay. And then okay. is that our shuttle? Yes. Yeah. Texas. It's cold, uh, kind of cold. Crazy, I've never been on a boat like this before, but it's given me all sorts of ideas. Okay over there? Oh, it feels so weird! <laughs> it's so like clear, it's crazy. So that's all the footage I got. Uh, a couple things to note. One, I know it's not a good montage. I didn't really try that hard. I was on vacation. Didn't really want to work that much. Uh, two, a different outfit. Not good at doing these things in the same day. Commitment issues. Three, uh, I think I already said I want to take this more seriously. Four, I know these videos are really, really bad. Just give me a minute to like grow into it and like let my personality come out a little more. It's weird talking to a camera by yourself. Number five, I'm using my phone camera because uh, let me show you what happened to my, my normal camera. Memory card, right here, see that right there, boop. And uh, not going in. Also, this lens is really bad at continuous focus, so it doesn't really matter, I'm just gonna use my phone. So I know what you're probably thinking. Austin, what does this have anything to do with art? I'ma show you. All right, well I was gonna use my desk, but uh, it's a little, a little cluttered. Let me, that's better. Out the change number three. Let's count how many I do in this video. It's probably more like six if you count the montage. There was like two or three in there. I'm gonna just be that art guy on YouTube that changes his outfit a lot, because I have no commitment. T to be fair, this is the same video, same day, this is the same day as uh, just a minute ago, for you like a second ago, when I was wearing black. I just got hot, it's hot in here, my apartment's hot. It's hot, heat's on, got too warm. All right, so I'm gonna show you how exactly all of that cruisy stuff fit into my art world and my inspiration and gave me a little more to, to work with and to spice up my illustrations with. Uh, missing something. Where'd it go? That's better. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to pull up on my handy dandy iMac my photos from the cruise. So, I'm gonna go to my iCloud drive and cruise. So, here's the deal. These are all raw photos, so it's a little easier to open them up in Bridge, which I guess I don't have. All right, so I already have a palette picked out that I've used a little bit in a couple things that I've only posted one or two of, but I wanna make a new one for you guys here on the YouTubes because it wouldn't be really all that fair for me to be like, here's what I did and then not actually do it. So I'm gonna take this photo, for example. This is a really good example of like Mexican colors, all these reds and greens and blues and funky, everything going on. We were on the island of Cozumel, which it's an island for the tourists and white people like me. Uh, so it's not really a whole lot of like authentic Mexico. We were gonna go to the mainland, but we couldn't because of embargoes or something. I don't know, it just wouldn't let us. So this is what we got. Um, but they do have like some of these things back in here that are like these, these hand meshed bags and 
some other fun stuff, like this guy's cool neon shirt. I'm gonna do something a little funky, because I my other color palette is a bunch of blues. I'll pop them right in front of my face. That's the palette I'm using for some of the illustrations I'm playing with. The one that I'm picking now, I'll probably do another video playing with so I show you how I work it into my art. I'll do that a little bit in, in, in a minute, but... So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open this raw photo in Photoshop and wait about six months. Okay, cool, it's open. So now we're in camera raw. This is, if you don't know anything about like photography or whatever, when you shoot in raw, it gives you full control over things like white balance, ISO, exposure, um, but to not a filtered rate, to like actually control those things. So if you put in a, like a JPEG photo, you're gonna be controlling those things, but it's gonna be visual, so it's not true to the data in the image. With this, you've got a lot more data, like in these blown out highlights up here, um, and in these, these shadows down here that you can pull out or suppress. And, uh, you know, your white balance, which would be this temperature slider, you can legitimately change. It's not just like putting like a tint on it. This is actually changing the white balance of the camera. So I'm not going to touch any of that. Um, I'm just going to keep it the way it was because I want the colors to be as true as possible. I might pull out the contrast just a little bit and adjust the exposure so it's a little better and bump up the clarity just so I can get a little bit of a better taste of the real photo. Um, the camera that I use, the Nikon D3200, has a pretty good color profile for real life shots. It, it's, it depends on what you're using. That lens is a little more washed out, um, so that's why I just like to bump up the, the, the clarity just a touch um, and the contrast. So I'm going to open the image. So now this is where a knowledge of color theory comes in. If you don't really know a whole lot about color theory and how colors work together and what uh, moods and uh, feelings that colors can invoke in people, this is really good to know and I would highly suggest looking up a video on it. Maybe I'll do one in the future. I don't really like it. It's not something that I enjoy teaching or learning about, but it's super important if you're going to be Specifically designers uh, of any kind, but even illustrators and painters and stuff, like if you want to be a fine artist, it's good to know um, what feelings things can invoke and also how colors play together. Uh, if you've noticed my current color palette in pieces like this one and this one, it's cotton candy. Cotton candy works. It's fun, it's playful, it makes you think like goofy and lighthearted and uh, whenever I do it, it, it just invokes that like kind of goofy, ridiculous mood that I really like and I want to convey. With this, I'm going to try to convey more of a cultural, if you will, uh, mood from Mexican culture because I want to use this color palette on things that have more to do with nature and outdoors and like the, the summer and the Mexico and the burritos and guacamole. First thing I'm going to do is hit C. That brings up my crop. I'm going to change my ratio to my original ratio and then it's unconstrained here so I'm going to hit clear just in case. Uh, so now that puts this up to ratio, which means it won't do anything. But if I pull this out just a little bit, boop, then I hit enter, V back to my arrow key. This gives me this little black bar, usually white. It's because I didn't change my little little guys over here. Boop, 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 boop. Um, so this will go to whatever your background color is. Uh, mine was black, so it's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. I'm not going to take a specific color scheme from one of the blankets that's cheating. It's not cheating, arts, whatever you want it to be. I'm just not going to do that. So we're going to go in here, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit more because I know what I'm going to pick now, and I want this to be available. I'm going to hit the I key. This brings me to my eyedropper, which is also found over here on the side of the screen. Um, what this does is your color sampler. There's all these different options, eyedropper, color sampler, whatever. Color sampler is essentially the same thing as the eyedropper. Eyedropper copies things like layer styles and text styles and whatever else. We don't need that right now. If we were to use it on this photo, it would just copy the color. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna use the color picker. That only comes into play with things that you've already done manipulations to. That's another video that I probably won't do. So I really love this yellow in here. And I want to get this more golden yellow. So now you see right here, this RGB code, that is where my eyedropper is. Now you can change this from actual color to proof color, grayscale, or whatever. 
I'm just going to keep it RGB. So now what I can do is I can make a box by hitting uh, 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 what, rectangle U. I'm more used to Illustrator, not great at Photoshop anymore. I'm good at Photoshop. I don't use it that much. I'm not good at hotkeys. Um, so I'm going to build a box using that color. So I double clicked my main color here. And here's my RGB co codes. I'm going to go 96, 56, and 0. That is a horrible color. So I obviously didn't pick what I wanted. I'm going to go back to my eyedropper tool and I'm going to move move this guy to more of a golden more of a goldy goldilocks up to it here. These are lighter. Ah. All right, go back to my U, hit this. 2 3 3 1 6 9 5 7 These are all wrong. There we go. Got it. I don't know what happened. Uh, enter. Now I've got this beautiful luscious gold here. You can kind of see it up here in this, this channel pick or two. Now I'm just going to build a box. It doesn't matter what it looks like, doesn't matter how big it is, I'm just going to put a box over here. Now I have my color picked out. I'm going to zoom back into these colors that I like, go to my eyedropper, I'm going to delete this guy, delete, delete this guy, because you have to right click it. Uh, now, what other color do I like? I really like this maroon. I think maroon and yellow play really nicely together right here. So let's see. That is 92, 37, and 34. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good color. Go back to my U key. I'm gonna just put it right here next to this guy. Boop. Again, these don't have to look good. Some people will make them look good for aesthetic reasons. Really doesn't matter. Let's go back into here. I drop her that again. I want to have, I like to have two colors that are similar, that kind of work. So if you see the cotton candy, I've got that purple in there. That's a good mixture of the blue and the pink. Um, a red and yellow is going to be like a deep burnt orange. So I don't know if I want to do that. Maybe I will. Now let's just find a deep burnt orange. Let's go with this guy right here. And we're gonna go back in here and see what happens. Okay. So, 92, 37, 34. It just automatically picked that up. That's kind of neat. That's not any different. All right. <laughs> so actually, here's the thing. These two colors are pretty drastically different from each other. So I'm actually gonna pick out more of a a light orange, a more exciting orange. Not this one, that one's too much. I think I'll probably pick this one in this green here. Go to my eyedropper, put one here maybe. 166, 76, 56. 166, 76, 56. Yeah, that's a good one. So I forgot to mention that this is a thing that I forgot happens in Photoshop. When you have a box selected, your color is going to stay what your selected box is, so it's important to hit the V key, go back to your arrow, then you, and then pick this as your color. Now it should work. Burp. Cool. So now I've got a good, good matching color. Now I want some contrast. I want like a light ass green or blue. I think probably a blue is going to look the best in here. So let's zoom back in. Let's pick something light and funky and a little earthy. I drop a tool. I think maybe this one might be good. Let's move that up just so we get the right color. Facebook's not leaving me alone. So now I've got this like cool earthy palette of four colors. This one's a little separated. Now what you could do is if you wanted more than four colors, which I personally don't like to do, uh, print things like print for screen printed shirts that can get a little pricey, um, things like separation, whatever. It gets a little more complex. I don't do that. I use a cream tone base for all of my work. It's just like a tone paper color, very barely off white. And then I use my color scheme. So this one's going to be really good for earthy like really cultural like pottery and cool statues and stuff like that that aren't supposed to look quite so like fun and crazy and ridiculous. So 
Uh, now that we've got these here, what I can do is go to Window, Libraries. So I've got a bunch of things in here. You can see Cotton Candy, My Library, Aleshi's is a client of mine, Seafoam. Um, I'm going to do a new library. I'm going to name it Mexican Earth. No. Mex yeah, fine. Mexican Earth. Boop. Okay, now what I can do is, okay, add foreground color. I get rid of all that. Just the foreground color. I'm going to click on this one. So now this is where switching to the actual eyedropper comes in handy. This will change your palette itself. Boop. Add fill color. This is a lot easier in Illustrator. I don't really like doing it in Photoshop. Add foreground color. And boop. Add foreground color. Now I have Mexican Earth, and it's going to show up cross-platform in all of my different softwares. So I can go to Illustrator, I can make a graphic or a logo or whatever you want to do uh, with this color palette, and I can just go to my libraries in Illustrator and pull up Mexican Earth. And I have that palette. My heat's about to turn on, it's going to be loud. So the last thing I want to do is get these colors from my Photoshop right here, wrong window, into my Procreate. So if you don't know, Procreate is an app for the iPad in which you can draw things. All right, so I'm gonna start a new canvas, go to square here, and there's nothing in it. So I'm gonna go to my color palette, I'm gonna go to my palette. So you can see here, I've got all sorts of palettes and uh, I'm gonna do a new one. It's just sitting randomly. It sets it to default automatically. I don't really like that, it's not that great. Uh, you can change the default, it's just a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna name this one Mexican Earth, like the last one. Uh, done. Now, I go to Classic or Value. I'm gonna go to Value. And so the cool thing about this is that I can just roll over and see what color these are. I can't, unfortunately, import my colors from my Photoshop library into Procreate, as far as I know. If you can, and anybody watching this in the future knows how to do that, tell me, because that would be nice and save a lot of time. But for now, this is how we're going to do it. Uh, I'm going to go through my hexadecimal and pick the first one, which is my orangey, rusty, umbery. Uh, those are all not the right names for that color. And just type it in. So it's E, 9, A, 9, 3, 9. Done. Boop. I just tap this box and it's there. Now I go to the next one. A6438. A6438. I'm bad at this. That's not it either. A64C38. Go. All right, next one. 5C2522. 5C2522. Yeah, that awful red. And then my last one is this. Uh, Blue. Three C five zero five nine. Done. Boop. Now the last thing I do is put in the same background color to this palette because going back and forth between them is just a pain in the butthole. So I go to that, go back to my new palette, go value, and then I just burp. That way I can just hit my background color and not worry about it, not have to go between palettes. It's always there. If that's the palette I know I'm going to use and it's set to default, that's it. So, that's how I get my palette for stuff. So I truly hope that really helped you guys. I wanted to teach people how to find inspiration when they're feeling just bone dry. And I'm going to do a lot of these videos. There's different ways to find ideas and inspiration and things. My lip is so goddamn itchy. There's ways to find inspiration everywhere. Traveling really helps. I found a lot of really awesome stuff there. There's parrots and uh, statues and great food and cocaine dealers and coral reefs and a big ship. Awesome, really cool 
trip. Um, it, cocaine's not great. There's ways to get inspiration in everything, whether it be the lines of the trees or, you know, the fish that you found in the coral reef or the, you know, whatever. There's all sorts of stuff. And I'm gonna make a video, you know, every so often talking about that because I know a lot of us have this thing where we're like, I wanna make stuff, but I don't really know what to make. And then you ask people on Facebook, and they're like, oh my god, draw me! And you're not gonna do that for free, and they're not gonna pay you, so you're still stuck not doing anything. This is one example. There's, there's inspiration in absolutely everything you do. Next time you go out somewhere, like, go to, whatever, when you go grocery shopping next, take a picture with your phone, just snap the produce bin, right? Okay, so then do what I showed you, or, you know, whatever you can use. There's a great app called Adobe Capture that basically does all that work for you. Uh, you just take a picture of it, and it puts these little dots on the screen and you can drag them to what you want to sample the color as. You save it, you can save it to your library if you have a Creative Cloud membership. If you don't, you can still save it, reference it later on your phone, uh, pull it up in whatever you use. Or, you know, if you use fine art, just match your colored pencils to it the best you can. I think it can show you Pantone, which most colored pencils have Pantone codes attached to them. If they don't, just use your eyeballs. If you don't have eyes, don't know why you're watching this. But yeah, go to the grocery store, take a picture, get the color codes, try to use that color palette for something. Draw a cactus or a bunny or a tree or aliens that are coming next month or whatever, you know? It's anything you want. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of ways to find inspiration. Draw a pepper from the produce bin, but as the color of a different fruit or pepper, because peppers are not, are peppers fruit? Sweet peppers are fruit. That's a thing I learned today and you did too, hopefully, probably. Maybe not, maybe I'm just dumb. Go out, do art, make things, do stuff, have fun. I don't still not gonna ever know how to end videos. Bye.